Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to break down all of the gear that I used to do a wedding film in 2021. So a couple things to note during this video is that I not only do wedding films, I also do a little bit of commercial video. So part of the reason that I use this gear is partially because I use it in the other corporate fields, such as shooting a testimony or some kind of event that requires the tools in my kit. And for the exact product name, as well as where you can find them online, they will be linked down in the descriptions below. So starting off with the main camera that I use for my wedding films is the Sony a7 III. And the reason I use the Sony a7 III is because it's a very lightweight camera that can produce a 4K image quality as well as 30 frames per second. And for most of my wedding films, I never exceed 30 frames per second. A couple of the reasons why I use the Sony a7 III for my wedding films is because there is an oversized 4K image as well as really good battery life when I'm shooting my wedding films. I typically burn through about three batteries during a wedding day, and that's shooting at 4K, 30 frames per second, 90% of the time. The times that I switch into 24 frames per second is during the uh, ceremony if I wanna sync up the audio that I have on the room, as well as toast during the reception. Moving on to the lens of choice that I have for my Sony, I use the G Master 24-70. It is a 2.8 aperture, and the reason I use this is because not only can I get a really wide depth of field, I can also um, tighten in a lot to up to 70 millimeters uh, and that is really helpful for detail shots. And not only that, something that's really beneficial about the Sony a7 III is that there's a uh, mode that you can use called APS-C mode. And what you can do is you can just go through the menu system, um, you know, and put an APS-C crop on. And what that does is it crops your sensor from a 4K image, and it kind of even goes a little bit tighter than a 4K image. And uh, what that does is basically gives you a little bit more um, in-body zooming abilities and so that helps me uh you know not only can i have a 70 millimeter i can boost that and get a little bit more uh, millimeters when i'm shooting on the 24 to 70. another thing that i add with my lens is a variable nd the variable nd that i use is a knf it's a pretty cheap and affordable nd filter and although it is not the best for color banding um, i have never ever found a problem with shooting a wedding film as long as it's outside you know uh, when i have the variable nd filter i've always been really really impressed with the image that i get using the uh, variable nd on my 24 to 70 g master lens moving on to the microphone um, this is just the microphone that is on camera so you know if i want to use some background noise um, some static noise as well as maybe um, you know the the bride uh, revealing her dress to her girlfriends um, sometimes i'll just capture that audio just straight on camera with this road uh, mic i think this is the most expensive uh you know road mic that is available for a shotgun mic um, that can sit in the hot shoot but uh, the reason i use that is because the audio that actually comes from it is usable for a wedding film uh, and so that's why i use the road mic so moving on to another audio source that i use during my wedding films is this zoom h1n pro and the reason i like this is because it's battery powered and is as well as it's really compact and that it can fit in most people's front pocket you know if a groom has a uh, sports coat on during his wedding you know i can just throw that in there as well as the officiant you know if the officiant has some suspenders on or, or uh, most of the time they're wearing a sports coat you know i can slip this down in their pocket and it comes it doesn't come with this you have to buy these separately but this road uh, adapter that can uh, actually it can lapel all the way up into the groom's sports coat as well as the officiant's sports coat and i typically mic them just below the boutonniere for the males something to keep in mind is that there is a lot of pressure on this one mic um, i know some wedding filmmakers that uh, buy an additional one of these just for uh, two sources of audio during the ceremony but thankfully i've never ever had an issue with you know recording the ceremony uh, vows as well as uh, letter readings you know gift exchange, stuff like that. I've never had an issue recording onto the Zoom H1N. So let's talk about stabilization. And this is probably the most controversial topic that is in my video. I personally prefer a Glidecam H2000. And this is a really old school way of stabilization. It is that really fancy thing that I'll put some B-roll over me right now. Um, and it is simply uh, where my camera sits right on top and I personally have control over running and getting a stabilized shot. Um, but the reason I've 
personally come to use a Glidecam H2000, uh, HD2000 is because of just, I have over five years of experience on this exact model. Um, and I have personally bought a Ronin S, I've bought a Ronin M back in the day, um, and I have never enjoyed shooting on one of those. That is an additional battery that I have to worry about charging for a wedding day, as well as it's a lot heavier than my Glidecam HD2000. And shooting a wedding for eight to 10 hours a day can be really exhausting. And you know, the lighter the weight, the better. Another source of stabilization is my Manfrotto monopod. I have a pretty dated monopod, but it works exactly how I need it to during a wedding day film. It has a fluid head and I'm able to get as much B-roll on that as I need. For my tripod shots, you know, in case the bride wants a uh, stationary shot of the wedding ceremony all the way through, I have an extra camera that I just pop on a tripod and I'm able to film all the way through the ceremony. I typically do that with my 5D Mark III and that's just because most of the brides don't want a really high-end quality ceremony shot. They just want the raw ceremony shot in general. Moving on to a, another source of audio, um, I have this Zoom H4n Pro and this is how I'm able to record the toast as well as prayers or um, you know speeches during the reception. And typically what I do with the Zoom H4n is I coordinate with the DJ and I'm able to plug in an XLR to a quarter inch and in, directly into his board. And he usually gives me a mono out and that's how I'm able to capture a really good audio feed for the toast during the reception. Something I've really come to grow and love is this little light. Uh, this is a off-brand version of the Aperture Light. It's called a Trade Bowl Light. And the reason I like this is because I'm able to screw in a, a hot shoot mount and turn this on. And during the reception, it is really bright. And I'm able to just put this right here on the hot shoot. You know, using my Glidecam H2000, I'm able to pan over the crowd as they're dancing for the reception. And I'm able to get some really good, high quality, well lit, footage during the reception for the bride. Something that I always keep in my camera bag is rechargeable batteries. The reason I keep rechargeable batteries is because um, if there were ever a situation where I didn't have access to a outlet, I have batteries that can power all of my other batteries with batteries. I know that's really weird to say, but it is possible for me to charge another battery with the batteries that I have in my camera bag. And so I usually just keep a uh, 2000 milliamp uh, little power bank as well uh, as a couple AA rechargeable batteries that have already been charged before the wedding so that worst case scenario I'm able to put the AA batteries for my Zoom H1n as well as the Zoom H4n Pro during the reception or during the ceremony. I always have a backup battery just in case worst case scenario. Something that I also keep in my bag are these Sony headphones and what this allows me to do is plug in the headphones into my Zoom H4n Pro during the reception to make sure that my audio level from the actual DJ's output isn't going to be overblown so that I can use it in my wedding film. Something that I always keep in my bag is an extra XLR as well as an XLR to quarter inch for the wedding reception. So this may shock you that I don't have that much camera gear when I shoot my wedding films. So you have to think you're going to be running around all day capturing moments. And the last thing you wanna do is have a bunch of camera gear that you're not even going to be using slowing you down. So this is what I found really helpful for me. And this is my personal experience. And you know, I don't expect you guys to sell off all your gear and buy exactly the gear that I have. This is just the gear that works personally well for me. So this pretty much sums up all of my wedding gear. The last thing to note is that I keep all of this gear in my Apache 5800 hard shell case. And this allows me to put it all in a protective case for me not to damage any of these things for future weddings. So I hope this video that you found to be helpful and insightful for you and your future wedding films. If you, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to drop a like button as well as a comment, letting me know down below what you think about this video. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.